So we have our, our plugs in. Um, I'm gonna sand those off in, in this next video, but these next two videos are really about getting these areas uh, filled in with the rails. If we look at this stool right here, ladies and gentlemen, look at this stool right here. You can see that from our drawing, we had that 9 16 and then 3 16 here because it's a 3 quarter thick piece that we're going to put on here. Here are our 3 quarter thick pieces that we're going to use as our rails. But uh, they get a rabbit out of the back of them so that they are like kind of locking in there so that they have a shoulder. And I'll show you that in a moment. We're going to be working on these portions here now. So this is the back top, uh, lower back, front top, and front bottom there. <clears throat> okay? So, we have to start with some boards that have been joined on one edge here. We're going to use that edge to go against our fence to cut our widths. So, I have to measure out what sizes I'm going to need. In our plans, it's supposed to be that this is a two inch one, this is a two inch wide rail, this is one and seven eighths, this is one and seven eighths. But when we do it with a dado blade, you know, we could be slightly above or slightly below those numbers, and it's not going to make too much of a difference. This rail here is in between two, two sides here. That rabbit joint goes in there. So that rabbit joint there, I want to be a really nice friction fit joint that's going to hold the whole piece together and hold it square. I also want the shoulder to come up really nice against that. So. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to measure out how wide these all have to be. And the last one here, notice that when we put this on, it's going to be at an angle. All the rest of them are going to be square or the parallel edges. This one is going to have a square bottom and then the top is going to be cut at that 82 degree angle that we made the back edge of. So that one I'm going to keep a little bit wide. So I'm not going to cut it to, I'm not going to measure it exactly and cut it to what it is. I'm going to measure it and add maybe a 16th to an eighth of an inch onto that uh, for later on. Okay. So let's start by measuring the front bottom. My front bottom is two inches exactly. Nice work, Nick. So I'm going to set my blade height to just over top of this. Remember, my table saw here uh, has a splitter that comes up with the blade so it stays perfectly even with the blade so that we can run through and not hit that on the back side uh, when we're making shallow cuts that don't go all the way through the board. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to have the guard off so you can see this real well. Um, again, this table saw here is one of those saw stop table saws where it has the electronics in it that if if I touch the blade here with my finger, I can see on the front here of my mechanics, I can see that that red light's coming on. Let me show you that. So here's my on off switch. You can see the green light that's on there right now. And you can see what happens if I touch with my finger there. You know, it's a really nice feature. I have two young sons uh, that I'd like to get into woodworking at some point. Um, and it just ensures that you're, that you're not going to cut things off, any, any fingers off here. Um, it doesn't do anything for kickback, so kickback, I can still have boards going flying through my window back there and having to repair that, but uh, <clears throat> it does do something for touching the blade up. Okay? So I'm going to set this for two inches exactly. And we'll cut this. I always err on just a hair uh, thick. I want it to be nice and tight inside those areas there without a, without a gap. I can always recut it then afterwards. I'm also going to move my stand here a little bit so my boards can go through without hitting the stand. Okay? All right, so here we go. We always do our thickness first, our width second, and our length last. So the length is not cut on these things. I'm just getting them to, to the width that they need to be to fit inside here. And that seems like it fits perfectly. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that as my front bottom. 
I just put an FB on there. And as you're working through materials here, you should always, always, always be labeling what you've done. Okay? If I square an end, I'll mark that with an SQ on the, on the end there, just so, to remind me that it's square. Particularly in, in a, a classroom environment like, like we would normally be in, from one day, you don't know when you're going to stop. You don't know where you're going to get to on any given day, depending on if someone's using a machine that you intend to get on or, or whatever. Labeling it so you have something clear the next day or if you're gone for an extended period of time so you have something when you come back uh, to be able to remind you of what you've done so far. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut the rest of these out. <clears throat> I am going to leave a little bit wider, about a sixteenth of an inch wider uh, rail on the top here so I can cut that angle out later on. But <clears throat> I, uh, let me show you one more thing. A student asked me about a, about using different colored plugs for the, uh, for the, for the backs here. This one, this person actually used, that's uh, ebony. Ebony is an, an African wood, very dense, and it's black, and it's also the black keys of your piano. Ebony and ivory. Anyhow, this is not an exceptional stool. It's one that was left around. I use it in the shop here for getting things off of the high areas and so forth. Okay? Next time I talk to you, we'll be looking at, uh, I'll cut the length of the rails here also. So I'll cut those to 20 inches long. Um, and then we'll be talking about how we're gonna mark out for those rabbits on the ends.